like to always give praise and honor to the God of Israel, of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. I'd like to thank y'all for coming out on the Lord's Sabbath day and not and understanding what this day is all about, which is it's a commandment for us to keep. No if and but about it. And God bring this down towards your salvation. But we're gonna get straight to this lesson. I'm gonna give you the title. The title is What is your excuse? What is your excuse? Now, I give an acronym on excuse, you can see it right here. And it says, excuse, exchange, my acronym is exchange uh, excuses for Christ's unlimited salvation to eternal life. Mm -hmm. And people got to understand that. And a lot of people want eternal life, but they got an excuse for everything. And most people, excuses are, well, my kids, my wife, my husband, my daughter, my girlfriend, my parents, my job, friends. That's the thing that's holding them back. Because they think so much about them instead of thinking about what does say the Lord say. Don't have an excuse when it pertains to your eternal life. Period. Try to do this as best you can. Salvation is the greatest gift God can ever give us. But we exchange it for excuses. What I mean by that is, for an example, it's like when you buy a present for a picky person. And what do you do when you buy a present for a picky person? You keep the receipt. <laughs> because you know that they so picky, they're going to want to return it back, or you're going to want to get your money back because it's not going to be satisfied. And that's what, how God don't want us to be when it comes to salvation. Don't be picky thinking this thing going to go as, like you want it to go, or that you're going to be agreeing with a lot of this stuff. You got to make this body, you got to make this flesh, you got to make everything about you get into this word and, word and do it. So don't be that picky present person, per se. Have an excuse for everything. Mm -hmm. And the greatest gift God gave us is salvation. Come on. Most people don't know what's on the line here. You gonna be a God just like him. That's what's on the line. That's what's on the table. A God. Think about it. The most powerful being that you can imagine on earth or in your mind, you only come close to what you're gonna be in, in the regeneration. You won't come close. Because he told them, eyes have ever seen, right. ears have ever heard what I got prepared for y'all. So don't have an excuse when you try to serve the Lord. Follow him. Like I told y'all, everybody, you're not following me. You're following this book. Because I got faults, I got flaw, I got faults and flaws, shortcomings and everything. I'm trying to get in just like everybody else. So don't let me be your excuse. Don't let nobody be your excuse. Follow this book. Period. We're going to start with 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 1. And you have so many people with excuses, man, but like I said before, I keep reiterating this, you don't know what's on the line. Most people don't know what's on the line right here. When you dip in that lake of fire, you ain't getting out. When you become God, you're not going to you're not going to go back to being a human. Mm -hmm. This is it. This is it. But you're going to change salvation because this don't make me feel good. That don't make me feel good. You always trust <coughs> your emotion, your feeling more than you trust in this book. Always, a lot of times people do that. Even I do it sometimes. So I got to say, oh, hold up, man. Let me get back to the book, man. I know. Get into. Uh, emotional about this thing. Let me find out what does say the Lord about this. Don't have no excuse because it make you feel the way. But we're going to start at 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 1. Go ahead, brother, when you get it. And I, brother, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. 
You know what I'm saying? This Paul talking. He said, he come here with excellent speech. And then what I say to you ain't gonna make you feel good all the time. But well, most people want, want somebody to make them feel good. Go ahead, bro. For I determined not to know anything among you, mm -hmm. save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear. Yes, sir. And in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in this uh, demonstration of the spirit and of power. He said, my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words. Most people come to church for the preaching to make them feel good. It's not going to be enticing if you don't understand what's on the line. Now, if you feel some type of way, as y'all know the song goes, it's because you are still got one foot in the world and one foot right here with us who's trying to do it right. You're going to be like, in between, it's going to tear you, I'm telling you, you got to be all in. Everybody got to be all in. It's going to tear you, I'm telling you. Some people going to say something you're going to, some people value what their friends say or their family members say right. rather than value what these books say. Right. Period. Right. So you got to make sure, don't get in this thing about, oh, that preacher, he's pretty hard, did man. I, I, shit, man, I can't go back over there. He couldn't. No, you here to get, get right, get in shape, mentally, from this book. That's it. And you know Israel, we all have it. We all have it. We just can't get on the ground when the police tell us to get on the ground. We got to run our mind. So guess what God put on us? These taskmasters, these jokers out here on the street. This God will, this God will for them to beat us in the head. Why? Because He said, "I gave you only my covenants, and look what you did. You disregarded. You went with the nation. You went with what they want to say. Guess what they're doing? He beat us down in the street. Y'all see it? Seven times more than any other nation. This is written in the book because you violated my law. It don't surprise me how they kill us." I understand. The curse is there. But keep believing that preacher, you highly favored. Okay. Go ahead, brother. Verse 5. That your faith should not stand in wisdom of me, but in the power of God. That's it. Your faith don't stand with me. Don't have faith with me. It's this book. It don't stand. You read, I'm just the reader. He just the reader. That's it. We read what the perfect word of God is saying. You follow that. You follow that. Jump down to verse 9. Go ahead. For it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. I can't even fathom in my mind what is that. I have seen a lot of great stuff, a lot of stuff in the world that right now, it kind of surprised me now. But he telling me, your eye haven't seen, your ears haven't heard what I got prepared for you, which is the one that's going to be resurrected up in that first resurrection, you're going to become a god. You think Superman great? <laughs> Superman can't even compare to God. That's the only thing I can just look at that can compare to God. Is these Marvel comics or these Greek gods? That's the only thing. I, that's the only vision I can see. But well, he's telling me it's gonna be way better than that. We talk about a God who hung the stars in the sky. How do you do that? Come on, bro. How do you do that? When you become a God, you gonna be able to do the same thing. You gonna be able to follow. You gonna be able to create planets. Why? Because he said, whatever I do, you can do. That's what the world don't understand. They got you thinking that, oh, you're going to be an angel with wings flying around the heaven. No, God said he created you in his image. His image. God ain't got no wings. You know how God looked? He looked just like us. Period. Understand that. Let's go to Luke chapter 14 and verse 13. Understand this. In order to serve God, we must exchange excuses for his salvation. We got to exchange these excuses. He make me feel this way, she make me feel that way, and all this stuff. What the books say? I'm gonna give it to you straight with no chasing. We drinking absolutely. 
<laughs> but them drinkers, they always say, what I'm talking about. <laughs> They're hundred proof. We ain't drinking no coke with it. We drinking it all straight. Straight. This is what does say the Lord. This is the only way you're going to get it to Israel. Because we hard headed. We are hard headed people. I know I got one of the hardest heads it is. But let me listen to this now about Jesus. Now he said, you got to understand, we, in order to serve God, you got to give up the things that you like to do. We got to balance it with the book. If you like to do this, go to the book and find out, am I sinning against God? If I'm not, okay. If I am, stop it. Period. And it's a work. We all work. Can't go cold check with this, believe me. It's going to take time. Luke chapter 14, we're going to start at verse 13. Go ahead. But without making for peace, call the poor. Yes, sir. The maimed, the lame, the blind. Go ahead. And thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot recompense thee. But thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. Understand, this is the time when the Lord is talking to his people about the feast of the Lord. When you're making a feast, he tells us. Don't call people to the feast that can repay you or that you know you can get something back from. Call the one that can't give you nothing back. Call the one that can't put nothing in the plate. Do that. And God said you will have a blessing in the resurrection. Why? You can become God. Man. But go ahead. 15. And when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, yes, sir. he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Yes, sir. When you eat bread in the kingdom of God, that means that you are in the Godship at this time. You got to know the opportunity to eat bread with him. Mm -hmm. With him. Mm -hmm. It ain't like talk, we talking now. We, we, are in, we are mortal right now. He's talking about when the kingdom of God is out upon this earth. This is what he say here. Go ahead. Then said he unto him, a certain man made a great supper and bade many. The certain man is Jesus now. He made a great supper. He bade many. He asked many. Go ahead. And sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. He's telling you, when the Passover hit, come. When the Feast of Living Bread hit, come. They never told me hit, come. Tabernacle hit, come. But listen to what these people did. Go ahead. And they all with one, one consent began to make excuses. Make what? Excuses. Excuses. Exchanging eternal life for what? Go ahead. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must need go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. Man, salvation on the line, you got an opportunity to be God. You talking about you going to go out there and farm some land? This is the silly stuff that people do. The silly stuff, this is what they exchange salvation for. This Jesus right here telling you to come over over here and talk with me and eat with me. This is what they said. Go ahead. And another said, I have bought five yokes of oxen. Uh -huh. And I go to prove to prove them. I pray thee, have me excuse. This one bought some oxen. These I gotta go see how these are running, man. I might have bought, bought some, some bad oxen now. They're like most people say, man, I gotta go see how the car running. I'm gonna come to church next Sabbath, y'all. I gotta go ahead and test drive the car car by the by. Basically. That's what they do. You traded salvation because you want to go and test drive some oxen? This is what he's talking about. Go ahead. Verse 20. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Oh, no, another one said, I married a wife, I can't come. I'm telling you, ain't hey, when God tell you to come, you come. I don't care who it is. Mother, father, brother, sister, husband, wife, they ain't with the plan, forgive them. Period. Mm -hmm. You better understand that you better get that through your head, everybody. Because if you don't forget your loved ones, when they reject God, you're going to be in that lake of fire with them. Mm -hmm. You're going to exchange eternal life for what? Excuses. Man, I got to go get married. This woman, man, we got a honeymoon to go to. Shoot, man, I've been waiting on this. What you talking about? I'll get with y'all later. 
Hey, excuses. Go ahead, bro. One one. So that servant came and showed his lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, "Now oh, Jesus, mad. This is Jesus talking now. He said he got angry because he gave them the best gift he can give. Them. Eternal life, and they turned him down for this simple jump right here. Excuses. Go ahead. Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city." And bring in hither the poor, yes, and sir. the lame, and the halt, and the blind. Now he offered this to Israel. Offered this to the ones that spoke to be with him. He said, go in the street. Like, these jokers don't want to deal with what I want to do. Go, go offer this to everybody. Bring them in. The lame, blind, sick, all these people, everybody you can find. Bring them in to me so I can give it to them. I can offer them in. Go ahead. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded. Yes, sir. And yet there is room. He and said, that, he said, that's a room. That means that very few still came. Very few still came. So like our feast, very few come. But I understand why. Because they exchange the salvation for what the world offered. They're, they exchange it. Go ahead, bro. And the Lord said unto the servant, uh -huh. go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. Go ahead. For I say unto you, that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. None of those men gonna taste of his supper at all. The good things of his supper. Eating with him in God's shipping, for a better word. You're gonna become a God. When you sit down and eat with him, he said, I got many thrones for y'all to sit on. When you sit with him, you sitting at the table with the master, eating with him. Understand that? Let's go to Luke chapter, well, jump down to verse 33, excuse me. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaken not all that he had, he cannot be my disciple. You see what I'm saying? If it come between God if you come to him, you serving God, get rid of it. Because you can't be his disciple. You cannot. I can't. Well, I gotta go check on my eyes. I gotta go check on my wife I just married. I gotta go check on this and that. That stuff don't work with God. These are dead people who reject the word of God, want to do what they want to do because they feel like it don't make me happy or it not it it really I'm not interested in it. I got other things that I'm interested in. This is what it is. Go ahead, bro. Verse 34. Uh huh. Salt is good, but if the salt have lost its savor, where with it, where with shall it be seasoned? Understand when we're talking about salt. Salt, meaning that that's the word of God. It's preserved something. You put salt on something, they didn't have a refrigerator back then. They put salt on stuff to preserve stuff to so it was small. So when you're dealing with people, when your words come out, he said, now you know the Lord did that on Good Friday and won't resurrect, he won't resurrect on Sunday. He died in the middle of the week. And he resurrected up way on the Sabbath. You salty now. You love a salty taste in their mouth. You know you're going to hell for dragging that Christmas tree up in your house and decorating it. You salty now. You love a salty thing. That's what I'm saying. That's what he's saying. Don't lose your salt when you're dealing with people. Don't lose it. Give them the word. Give them the word. You know you're going to hell and you eat that pig. You salty. Understand that. This is what he's talking about. Don't lose your flavor. Don't lose it. Because you're trying to make somebody happy. Forget that. I don't care about being light. Understand that. Let's go to Luke chapter 9 and verse 56. I know we got one more. That's good. Luke chapter 9 verse 56. When you follow Jesus, you can't go back now. You can't go back to what you used to do. Like me and my brother were talking about this morning. He said, man, I can't go back to that. So I can't go back to that, man. I see life right now. Believe me, if you go back, you worse than what? Just like you never even heard this at all. Your punishment going to be so great. It's going to be greater than the ones that never heard. Understand that. Let's go to verse 56. 
Verse 56. Luke chapter 9 and verse 56. Go ahead, bro. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy man's lives, mm -hmm. but to save them. Yes, so they went to another village. This is what Jesus come to help, try to help you save yourself. How? Because he got a law and he's going to carry it out, man. He's not going to make no adjustments because you Israelites. He's not going to make no adjustments because, oh, I like Jeff. He good. Let him slide on this and that. No, he's going to carry it out. He's trying to make sure that you follow his law so he can save you. Period. Go ahead. And it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. You know, I don't want to say, yeah, Jeff, this sounds good. Uh, that sound good when Jesus is talking about what you're I don't do this, man. They're into it. Well, go ahead. This is what he said here. Jump down to verse 59. Uh, and he said unto another, follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Uh oh, here's another excuse. Now, God give you the opportunity to follow him that day. And you tell him, wait a minute, Lord, just hold off for a minute. Let me go bury my dad. And this is what Jesus said. Go ahead. Jesus said unto him, let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. Now, I can never have seen a dead person bury a dead person. He telling these people that are trying to leave him, you dead just, 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 as, just as long. You dead just like that person in the coffin. Mm -hmm. You dead. Right. You, just, you just walking dead. What Jesus said, man, he's like, let them dead people be better than dead people. Let them go ahead. Get rid of them. Skip them. Go ahead, bro. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell. Okay, go with another excuse. Go ahead. Which are at home at my house. Let me go tell mom and them I'm about to go to the wilderness. Let me go tell mom and them I can't go with them to church on, on this day. You ain't got to tell them that, look, I'm gone. When Jesus put this on the table, you ride with it. You ride with it. And this is what Jesus said. Go ahead. And Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. When you put your hand to this work, and you look back and say, Man, uh, man I was having so much fun with them. I was having so much fun sleeping all over women. I was having so much fun cussing, drinking, getting drunk. I was having so much fun. You looking back and forth. He said, you ain't fit because your mind is still on that. You ain't even know this. And then you're going to go back to it. That's sickness. He said, you ain't even fit for the kingdom of God. Don't play with this, y'all. Let's go to Matthew chapter 10. Let's look at another excuse. I'm just trying to show you how these excuses people exchange for eternal life. They exchange this stuff for this silly stuff. Mm -hmm. I forgot to put it on there. Okay. Matthew chapter 10, verse 34. I thought I put it on there. Two, you right. Skip that. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 11. And verse 8. Yeah, I'm going to get to Matthew 10 and 11. Ecclesiastes. We'll hit that book very often. ECC. <laughs> right after Psalms and Proverbs. The regular after Proverbs. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 and verse 8. See, you got one thing I, I learned in, this, in reading this Bible. You can't start off learning this Bible and following the Bible while you're old. You know, some people say, well, I got a lot of stuff I want to do. I'm young and I got plenty of time. Oh, you don't. You better get your mind conditioned to this. If your mind is not conditioned to this, you'll walk down to the world and try to have fun with them and you're going to immediately get yourself hurt. That's why I'm stressing so much to teach my kids what they're supposed to know, and the kids in here, what they're supposed to know because they are protected right now, living in their parents' household. Wait till you get out there and get your own stuff, your, your house, your car, and all this stuff, and you have to deal with people all day long. You got to figure it out. 
If this joke was ready, him fixing my car because he he a good Samaritan, or he fixed my car because he want to get between my legs. Understand that. And women got to be real careful about this stuff now. I just feel I just feel out there too now. Understand that. And most men got to understand this too. When women come to you, complimenting you on this and that, telling you you look good and all this stuff, and you know you ugly, oh, you know they're looking at your pocket. They trying to get what's in your pocket. Understand the game now. One thing about a player, he's a great listener. He gonna listen to you. This is what he listen to all them people. And they gonna say, he gonna say, I know what she like, I know what he like, I know all what they like. I'm gonna give it to him. Oh, don't worry about that. I got you. Walk off from her. You know, little Mac move, walk off, pick her up. She just looking at you, smiling. You see, you know she's smiling at you because you did what she want. So, therefore, he planted that seed there. She planted that seed there. Now, that time will come. Now, you got to come through now. You got to come through now. Mm -hmm. I you really remember I fixed your car? You remember all the stuff I did for you? Now it's your turn now. Understand that. So get into this book early, Young People. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, and verse 8. Go ahead. But if a man live many years and rejoice in them all, yet let him remember the days of darkness, for they shall be dead. All that cometh is vanity. He tells this man, you live in for many years. Remember them days of darkness. What are you talking about? Them dark times that are going to come in this world. God has shown you the blueprint. He has showed you what's going to come about. Remember that so you can be prepared when you're facing this world. While you're young. Believe me, you get this stuff while you're young, it'll help you all the way when you get older because why? You know where the traps are. You know who the good people, you know who the evil people. Go ahead. Rejoice, O oh young man, yes, sir. in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth. He telling you, rejoice, have fun in your youth, but don't forget what I told you out of this book. Don't forget this. Go ahead. And walk in the ways of thine heart and in the sight of thine eye. Yes, sir. But know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. He said, no, understand, you have fun, but believe me, all the fun you having, he's going to bring everything into judgment. Everything you said, everything you wrote down, everything you typed on your computer, everything you typed on your phone, everything going to come up in judgment if you ain't, if you don't have Jesus. I need him, because some of this stuff I, I got, I did, I don't, want, I don't want this stuff to show up. Believe me, this thing is serious. Go ahead, bro. Therefore, remove sorrow from my heart, thy heart, uh -huh. and put away evil from thy flesh, for childhood and youth are vanity. He telling you, hey, look, hey, why are you young? Put away this stuff. Learn how to deal with these emotions while you're young. Because when you get older, you got to make sure you know how to step out here. How to step. Jump down to verse 12. Learn what God likes and dislikes while you're young. Learn what he likes and dislikes while you're young. Chapter 20. Yeah, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1. Yeah, we're going on down in it. It, it connected to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. My <laughs> Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1. Go ahead. Remember not thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil day of remember now. Remember now, I'm sorry. Uh -huh. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. Yes, sir. While the evil days come not, now the year, years draw not. And that's what he's telling you, young people. Remember your creator in your youth. Because the evil day hasn't come yet. A lot of times y'all don't see how your mom and dad is protecting you for this. I know you got your plan all wrapped up in your head, what you're gonna do and how you're gonna do it. That's fine today. That's fine, Daddy, and we want y'all to figure that way. We want y'all to be able to take care of yourself. But a lot of stuff y'all don't see that we protecting you from. 
Oh man, I want to go hang out. I want to go date. I want to go party. Uh, you want to go date? We'll bring.